What's going on, Washington Commanders Nation? It's your boy, Rio Robinson, back with the latest and greatest from the Rambling with Rio YouTube channel, where we ramble about the Washington Commanders. Today is Monday, April 24th. It is draft week, baby. NFL fans, let's unite. Washington Commanders fan, it is our time. It is Christmas for us NFL fiends. We've been waiting for this all off season and the draft is the event that culminates and puts that climax finishing touch on the NFL off season. We're three sleeps away from the NFL draft. So, you know, I got to hit you with one final mock draft. The last of the Mohicans, the last mock draft of mock draft speculation season three days from now we won't have to worry about mocks anymore and we'll finally start putting some names and faces to teams and ready to give it to you straight up i'm ready to get this over with i'm not going to spend a long time on each pick we've went through countless and endless mock drafts through the season i think i've done like 20 to this point i'm probably exaggerating but probably not but the theme of this here draft i'm about to put out is ready to play immediately and offer positional flexibility because our favorite drinking game per usual is Ron's favorite football cliche. He wants players that offer position flex that can play multiple spots if needed. And all these guys are ready to get to it right away. They're ready to get there because Ron is on a one year clock right now and he has to make shit happen in 2023. So we're not going to sit here and pretend for the future. I seen Albert Breer mention something like commanders could try to get out of the first round or look to get assets for 2024 so they could trade up for Caleb Williams. Ron ain't, Ron don't know if he's going to be a part of the plan in 2024. So we're not even going to discuss that sort of thing right now. I, I get the vision. Trust me. I understand the vision, but we're not even going to touch that right now. We're going to start my final mock draft with the 16th pick in the 2023 NFL draft. The Washington Commanders select nobody because we have traded back 15 spots to the Super Bowl champion Kansas City Chiefs. You know, we got that Ron, Eric, Andy Reid connection going on. It was rumored today via Chiefs Wired that the Chiefs are thirsty for somebody and they're putting the groundwork in for a significant trade up in the draft. We're better than the exact midpoint of the draft. There's not 32 picks in this year's first round because Miami was docked a pick for tampering. So, the 31st pick is now the Washington Commanders. And with the 31st pick in the NFL draft, the Washington Commanders select Emmanuel Forbes, cornerback, Mississippi State. A dozen pick sixes. Half a dozen. Six pick sixes in his college career is Emmanuel Forbes. The only knock on this guy is he has a malnourished ass frame. He's 166 pounds at the combine, six feet, 166 pounds. I think Amari Roll is like the only other corner that's been drafted high that was that size. But the ball production is out of this fucking world. And the speed, 4-3 speed, led the league, led the country in picks this year. All-time leader in pick sixes with six absolute baller signed me up especially via trade back i know fred smoot gotta be licking his chops for a pick like such i know he cannot wait to see emmanuel forbes become a part of the washington commanders and in that trade that we did with the kansas city chiefs we did get an asset for 2024 they gave us their second this year pick 63 and they gave us a pick next year, their second next year. So we got, we went back to 31, 15 spots back. They gave us a two this year and a two next year. And we'll get to that 63rd pick in a second. But with the second pick in my final mock draft, the Washington Commanders select Steve Avila, offensive guard, TCU. Just like I feel like Emmanuel Forbes offers that flexibility of being able to play in the nickel and we're on the outside, Steve Avila could start 
as a center or a guard, but I think here in Washington, he would be the starting left guard, immediate plug and play player. I like him much better than Osiris Torrance from Florida. Great mover. We've met with the guy at the combine. We've met with the guy at the senior bowl. And to be perfectly honest with the way that his draft stock has risen in the last few weeks, He may not be in the second round period. He may go on night one of the NFL draft. So if he's there at 47, you absolutely sprint the card to the podium. Starting left guard, we now have a starting offensive line of Charles Leno, Steve Avila, Nick Gates, Sam Cosme, and Andrew Wiley, which is significantly better than the offensive line we filled it last year. And a lot of that was depleted because of injuries and that sort of thing. But this year... We got some reinforcements, three young-ish guys ready to go add it to the group. Sam Howe is as protected as he needs to be, but we could touch on the O-line again at some point later in the draft. Moving on to the 63rd pick, the final pick of the second round of the NFL draft. We are going to a program that does not produce bust when it comes to players. If anything, Iowa going to get you a solid football player. If they're not a superstar, they're at least going to be really good. But the last few tight ends that come out of this program have been absolute fucking dogs. Give me tight end, Sam LaPorta, Iowa, plug and play tight end one from the day he steps in the building. Cole Turner, Amari Rogers, all those young guys, John Bates, y'all figure out how that's going to be ordered behind him. We now have a starting tight end on the roster. I think tight end is not a sneaky need. I think it is a need. I, I would like to see tight ends develop, but I'm not going into the season banking on slow ass Logan Thomas, an unknown in Cole Turner. Another quarterback turn tight end experiment in Amari Rogers and a primary blocking tight end in John Bates. I'm adding to a room. Laporta got a little bit of wiggle to him. He's a natural athlete, natural hands, and he's an Iowa tight end. I trust the process because I trust the program, period. First three picks of the draft. At 31, we took Emmanuel Forbes. 47, Steve Avila, guard, TCU. And at 63, we took Sam LaPorta, tight end, Iowa. Moving to the next round of the draft with the 97th pick in the third round of the NFL draft, our Washington commanders select Luke Weipler, center, Ohio State. What's the theme of this draft so far, guys? Position flex, two of the three guys we already drafted offer it. Luke Weipler is primarily a center, which we need the depth now that I think we're going to move on from Chase Ruye and Nick Gates is the supposed starter at center. This is a guy who could compete for the starting center job and he could plug and play at any of the guard spots. A lot of guys even project that he could be a starting left guard in this league. He just looks like my kind of guard. He got these bulky-ass, stone-cold Steve Austin knee braces. This looks like one of those hog mollies I want on my line. And after the experiment we did last year where we trotted out a new center, it felt like half the season, we trotted out five centers last year. Never want to go through that again. I want some very good depth in that class. And Mike Renner has Weipler as the most underrated interior line prospect in this entire 2023 class. We've dipped into the well of interior linemen twice so far. My top four picks with Steve Avila at 47 and Luke Weipler now at pick 97. Moving on to pick number 118. And with the 118th, no, I'm not even going to do that this time. We traded the 118th pick to the Las Vegas Raiders. And with those two picks, they, they gave us the one pick number 141 and pick number 144. And with the 144th overall pick in the NFL draft, the Washington Commanders select edge rusher Isaiah McGuire, Missouri. And I know a lot of you are going to say, why are you taking an edge with the fifth pick of the draft? One, we have 10 picks now, so I'm going crazy with it. Two, I think one of these guys is not going to be here in the next two years. And I'm planning for a future without one of them. And I'm getting an absolute dog. This is a guy I watched push 
Broderick Jones back into Stetson Bennett multiple times when they played against Georgia. This is a guy with absolute torque and speed, high motor, doesn't have the craziest, freakiest combine time. Don't need to see it. Our all-time leader in sacks, Ryan Kerrigan, he wasn't as twitchy or as straight line fast as Montez Sweat and Chase Young. But you know what he did? He got to the quarterback more than both of them. And I need a I need a I need me a, the edge rusher that precedes one of these guys leaving needs to be a dog that can get to the quarterback. And I believe Isaiah McGuire can do so. Moving on to the next pick we got from Vegas, 144 overall, a position that Washington neglects every year with the 144th pick, the commander select linebacker, DeMarvin Overshone, Texas, hybrid guy, converted safety turn linebacker, big 6'4", long, lengthy body for a linebacker. He projects to be a will. I'm pretty sure you can move him all around the linebacker room except for at the mic spot. We can use another athlete in that room. The linebacker position, we got Cody Barton there, which to a lot of people feels like a lateral move. He's supposed to be a more natural Mike backer than Cole Holcomb. The jury's out on it. We'll see. But a linebacker room of Jamin Davis, Cody Barton, and DeMarvin Overshown, that's a linebacker room I'd sign up for. And I have a hunch that they're not going to even draft the linebacker. But it'd be nice if they'd acknowledge that that room needs work and we would take one of those guys. So Overshone, come on down to Washington, taking me to pick number 150 in the NFL draft. It's time we put a running back on the roster, y'all. It is time we put a running back on the roster with the 150th overall pick. Some will call it a reach. I would not call it a reach. We are taking running back Keaton Mitchell. East Carolina, absolute speed freaking demon, home run hitter, needed in my life. I need me a home run hitting line um, running back. This guy is an absolute jitterbug. I don't care about his size. I don't care about any of it. That single digit flies and those feet fly up and down the sideline whenever this guy gets after it. I don't know what happened to the graphic that I had on the board for him, but he's just going to be a pictureless prospect in this thing. Moving, Taking us to pick number 193 in the sixth round as we move this mock draft ahead. We're going to dip from the DMV pool at a wide receiver position, you know. Maryland receivers kind of slip in the draft sometime, and they got two guys this year that are looking to come from the same cloth as the DJ Moores and Stephon Diggs of the world. So with the 193rd overall pick in my mock draft, my final mock draft, Washington selects Dante Demas, wide receiver, Maryland. Yes, I am cognizant that he had a catastrophic ACL injury in 2021 that he bounced back from. He is new Cam Sims with more promise. He actually scored 14 touchdowns in college. This guy uses his size well. 4-5 is plenty fast for a 6'3", 212 wide receiver. The guy can ball. He can go up and get after it. He can play on the inside, on the outside of the offense, position flex. We need a big body receiver after letting Cam Sims go. And I'm not sure Marcus Kemp is going to actually be a guy that makes the roster outside of special teams reasons. So bring me Dante Demas. Seventh round, we got two picks at 215 and 233. I'm going to keep this brief so we can get out of here. I know I've already taken too much of your time with the 215th pick in the NFL draft. I think it's time that we give Jacoby Brissett, we give Jacoby Brissett and we give Jacoby Brissett and Sam Howell a running mate. A guy to play in that quarterback room with them. A guy that some people project as a wide receiver. I hate playing the make a black college quarterback into another position guy. But no, we're taking him to be the third string quarterback of our football team. This is a guy who has passed Lamar Jackson and accounted for more touchdowns in the entire history of the Louisville program. This is a guy over a hundred touchdowns in his career, almost 10,000 total yards in his career of passing yards. The guy, the guy put up a lot of numbers, not a guy that you actually think you're going to build a future around, but he's a guy that you can develop and 
anybody's better than Jake Fromm. I think I could come off the fucking couch as a wash human being and be better than Jake Fromm. Malik Cunningham, you are a commander, which takes us to the conclusion of my 2023 mock draft. With the 233rd overall pick in my mock draft for the Washington Commanders. We are taking a kicker. Yes, I'm taking a kicker. I know people, oh, you can't draft a kicker. If you can trade a fifth round pick for a long snapper, you can draft a fucking kicker, especially when your kicker misses extra points and chip shot field goals on a consistent basis. Jake Moody is the best kicker in the country. That's all I've got to say about Jake Moody. So to conclude this mock draft and wrap up what I just did, we traded up from 16, we traded back from 16 to 31 with the Chiefs and took Emmanuel Forbes. And we got a, the 63rd overall pick and a second next year from the Chiefs. We took guard Steve Avila from TCU. And then we took Tight end, Sam Laporte in Iowa with our second second round pick. Then we went to the Ohio State Buckeyes program for center, Luke Weipler. We made a trade with Vegas. We traded 118 for 141 and 144, just like we did with Cole Turner and Sam Howe. And we turned those two picks into Isaiah McGuire, edge out of Missouri, and linebacker DeMarvin Overshone out of Texas. We took running back Keaton Mitchell with the 150th pick, wide receiver Dante Demas Jr. from Maryland with 193, and to close out the draft in the seventh round, we took Malik Cunningham and Jake Moody. What I see with this class is a lot of positional versatility. I see with our first four picks, four guys that are ready to come in and play right away. Isaiah McGuire, if for some reason Chase was to get hurt or we were to trade him, he could be plugged into that lineup opposite Montez Sweat immediately. DeMarvin Overshow, a linebacker that can get on the field with Cody Barton and Jamin Davis in a hurry. And Keaton Mitchell, the home run hitter we're missing in our running back room. We were like last in the league, or at least it felt like at the eye test in in long plays from running backs last year. I want a guy that could take it 80, take it to the crib. Keaton Mitchell from ECU. Dante Demas can be new Cam Sims. Malik Cunningham can be our project third string quarterback because I don't want Jake Fromm on my roster. And Jake Moody, kicker Michigan, is brought in here to give Joey Sly, our kicker from the area, some competition or to be the replacement because I feel like drafting a kicker works out usually better than picking up someone else's trash when it comes to a kicker. But that's what I got for my mock draft, man. We're three days away from the actual NFL draft. Let me know what you think of my mock. Let me know what your final mock draft is going to look like for the Washington Commanders. Let me know in the comments below. And if you want part in my content creator, fan media compilation of predictions for pick 16, shoot me a video before tomorrow. Because it's going to be our Wednesday where we're going to, with a with the 16th pick of the 2023 NFL draft, the commanders select. It's going to be a whole bunch of that this year. And hopefully this year someone predicts it correctly because we all pretty much said Chris Olave or another receiver or Kyle Hamilton and not a soul got it right last year. Let's hope we get. Well, let's hope we find more success when it comes to that this year. That's all I got for right now. Hail to the Washington Commanders. It's draft week. Deuces.